nightclub bit. <laughs> that would have been fun, but I had no talent in that direction. But uh, I, uh, I knew what those little clubs were like. I, and I, you know, because I went to a lot of them as a teenager and, and later. Uh, that was our main source of, of uh, fun in Galveston. I had a friend who read some of these uh, things that I've written. She said, y'all sure did drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we did. Uh, but, uh, you know, smoking and drinking were our, our, our drugs, you might say, in my generation. I don't know if that's changed or not, really. <laughs> Well, smoking and drinking and doing drugs, I think you're. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but talk about you. Talk about a young woman in this time period and, and the challenges that she faces. Well, it seems to be a, a theme in, in some of your work. Yeah. See, there's a. I. I didn't like the social hypocrisy. Uh, that I found in the South of this country. I'm from Tennessee originally, and. Uh, and in Texas, and there was a great deal of it, uh, and there was a lot of uh, uh, racist feeling uh, that I also didn't like, uh, and so uh, a lot of the things that I'm writing about uh, are in, and having to and talking about are, are stories that are trying to bring some of that to light so people will see what their actions are like. and. Uh, and see the uh, hypocrisy of that sort of morality, the sort of drink and, and vote dry. Uh, you know, every, everybody in the little town that I went to high school in for five years, uh, most of them, uh, you know, would serve uh, whiskey and, and beer at home. Uh, we were, America wasn't much of a wine drinking country at that time. It's uh, changed its ways since then. but. Uh, but they, they would go to uh, the courthouse uh, at election time and vote the town dry or the precinct dry or the county dry, you know. And you, again, you, you were still caught in the brown uh, bag thing. So, <laughs> uh, and I thought that was ridiculous. And I thought the racism that I saw, uh, particularly it was, I was impressed <coughs> with the fact having come from the South and known about black uh, pe people's racist feelings about blacks, then I began also, I noticed immediately the feelings about uh, Mexican Americans. And uh, so I was, I was very interested in those conflicts. You have to remember too that, that there's no story without a conflict. You have to have a conflict to have a story. And so those social conflicts we became the conflicts of uh, very often of my stories. So what was the uh, inception? How do, you, how do you begin writing a story? What's the inception of My Brother's a Cowboy? What gets you to start writing that story? I don't know really. <laughs> Sometimes I know. I loved Eudora Welty's work. I don't know if, if any of you have read her. But there's a very famous story of hers called Why I Live at the P.O. And that's for post office. And uh, it, it's by a woman who feels very put upon. Uh, it's about a woman who feels totally put upon by her parents <coughs> and her sister particularly. And uh, so when her sister comes home married to a, a guy and, and, and she has this very chattery, awful little daughter who's always breaking into a tap dance, uh, she goes and lives in the post office. She's the postmistress of this little place. Well, I just, I really, it's a very funny story. And it's uh, kind of sad, but it's, it's uh, you can run into people all over the world and then you mention her name and they'll say, have you read Why I Live at the P.O.? But it, she was almost paranoid, I mean, this woman was, about, uh, you know, her whole family. So uh, she was very put upon and I guess, uh, I kind of felt that way about the fact that my brother seemed to be able to do anything and get away with it, but I couldn't. And so I, I, uh, I, I And your brother is in fact a cowboy. Yeah, and he was in, in fact a cowboy. So he was, he was getting into ranching and all that kind of thing. And uh, he really did, uh, you know, uh, the bit with the bull. He really did go, uh, he had worked 
for the guys that were running the auction, which is a livestock auction. And he knew that this old Bramer bull was really a very gentle bull. So he, he did get hold of the bull and, and take him to the dance, which uh, everybody, there's a huge hall there that they call the Veterans of Foreign Wars Hall. It's like a big barracks. Kind of like the SBJST hall you went to. Yeah, and, the, and you'd always have a kind of country band, country rock music, not rock music, that one in yet, but a country western band playing, and people would go on Saturday night, and you had to pay to get in, and they'd stamp your hand. And my brother uh, had paid to get in, and the woman who who was taking, the, uh, making the, uh, well, was, was doing the stamping, wouldn't believe it. And he was very mad about this, and I think he was more than a little drunk. Anyway, he goes down to the uh, auction barn, which is right next to the VFW hall, and gets the bull, and really does bring him, and bring him inside the dance hall. <laughs> this was written about in the newspaper, of course, where my parents would find out most of what my brother was doing. <laughs> and so, <laughs> that, they, you know, they were amazed and wondering and uh, laughing too by the time it was over, but I used that uh, in the story. And uh, then uh, he, he, he did get really unhappy in college, and so he left and joined the, the paratroopers. And the business about jumping out of planes and spitting tobacco on the way down, he did this. Uh, he was somebody who was trying to grow up in every kind of way, sometimes very destructive ways. Uh, but he, uh, he, was, uh, he was mischievous as a little boy and as an older one. He, would, he, he, uh, he got himself into a lot of interesting trouble. <laughs> so.